All right, I just moved the camera around a little bit. I left it in the same location, but I tilted the camera forward. I'm not even sure my face was in the previous one. With this old camera, it's only got a preview on the back, and of course I'm pointing it at myself. And uh, So the, uh, the other thing I spoke a bit about it on today's ride that got deleted, was that one of the commenters on one of my recent videos talked about 4k video versus 1080 and that my videos would look better if I used 4k some of you might not be into all this technical jargon but long story short I was doing 4k and I live out in a rural area and the upload speed I use Starlink download is great it's two to three hundred megabytes a second but the uploads like 9 to 15 on a good day and uh, the 4k files for me I use a, a Mac and iMovie I don't have anything fancy I'm using and I don't know if maybe my files could be smaller if I use the different approach but you know a typical 12 to 15 minute video I think is about three and a half to five gigabytes and that takes a long time to upload plus I have another YouTube channel I do on the wildlife so it's just a lot of you can only upload one at a time and um, I found if I did 1080 the file sizes were smaller I do record in 4k now this new this old GoPro is 4k 15 Whereas I, you can record with the newer ones at 4K 30 or 4K 60. I think I do 4K 30 on the GoPro 10. But um, when you upload to YouTube, YouTube further compresses your files with a different um, codec, a different uh, sort of conversion. And again, I know a lot of you probably aren't interested in all this stuff, but... Um, the commenter's point was my videos weren't looking too good and they were very pixelated and when I look at them which I'm usually doing on my TV monitor in my office which is I think it's 4k it looks okay I didn't see quite the pixelation but I, I know somebody on Facebook one time told me that my video was pixelated for him which of course I don't want that and um, uh, you know, I don't know if you guys are seeing the same thing. When I compared myself on my end, the 4K versus 1080, the main difference I saw was the, definitely the detail in the trees is a little more blocky, but not pixelated. And the road itself looked a little less clear. But I thought for my content, it wasn't that important. It was mainly just talking. But uh, I don't want you guys to see crappy footage. So I'm just kind of curious what you're seeing on your end. Um, I don't think I can do a side-by-side, -side, like here's a 4K and here's a 1080, because when I render the final file, it's not going to make sense when you're converting um, two different types in the same clip. iMovie's got some weird things about the, the first clip has to be 4K if you're going to render it in 4K, or some other rule. So people come up with dummy files to put in there. I know some of this, I'm probably wording it wrong and the purist will get upset with me, but basically I'm hitting the highlights enough to get the point across. I think I might end up buying a used newer GoPro to put on here if I find that I'm going to keep doing this. I usually buy new equipment, but for this I might just buy a, a Hero 10 or 11. Or maybe take the 10 on my chin and I'll buy a new one for my uh, helmet. And again, I'll see how this footage looks and whether I even use it. Uh, I'm not sure my face was showing up in round one that I just did coming down this road the other way. 
and uh, also I'm not sure how bouncy this one's gonna look because it doesn't have stabilization and a lot of the features that are now available in the newer cameras GoPro's gotten like the iPhone where they just come out with these things every year which I'm not against innovation but how about you guys but like when Apple used to come out with new products it was like Christmas for me and now it's just like oh okay it, it weighs 0.08 ounces less than last year yes or you know the camera has gotten a little better and uh, there's just not much exciting me to want to upgrade to an iPhone um, so I, I used to get one every year and now you know I skip probably two or three years and so at least then you feel like you're getting enough jump in innovation I haven't bought a new GoPro one of the things I think the new GoPro lets you do is name the uh, functions customize them like I have day and nighttime settings but you have to just use their names and remember which what with, with what but I wouldn't upgrade just for that But upgrading this Hero 4 makes a lot of sense if I'm going to uh, put it on this motorcycle probably, especially for the preview and the stabilization. That's a very odd place to pass right there. That is a very odd place to pass. My theory is that the uh, stabilization is going to be desired on this handlebar because I think it's going to look too jumpy, but, you know, I used that camera for plenty of mountain biking trips that I did alone and with the kids. It's one of the main reasons we bought it. So I didn't even think about, you know, the footage didn't bother me back then that it looked uh, a little jumpy back then let this guy go You know, so maybe on the motorcycle, though, it's more vibration than on my mountain bike. But, you know, I was on dirt trails with that mountain bike hitting bumps and jumps. And I don't recall. I bet if I go back and look at that footage compared to if I wore one of the newer GoPros, it would be a world of difference. But I'm also not sure it's that important, but we'll see. Oh, I meant to pull out my phone to see if I could preview what the camera is seeing and I've gotten a little rusty on that old camera about I think the way you turn on Bluetooth and connect to it is a little different than the newer ones another thing I had uh, tried to touch on in this other video today was one of the commenters asked me if I would be making a video about installing the wind deflectors on this bike and I hadn't really thought about it I responded to them that uh I could certainly do that. It's supposed to be a very simple job, but I have a, a way of taking a simple job and making it difficult. And I was uh, reading some uh, forums where a guy did the same project with the same brand, and he over-tightened the, the bolt. And of course, it snapped, and that makes a minor project become a major annoyance. And that's the sort of stuff I've done. And now I traded emails with the owner I think it's JES Customs is the company. And he confirmed for me that, um, as he described it, easy peasy. It's uh, the four bolts where the windshield goes in. And that should be easy. And uh, one guy online on my forums told me the same thing. Um, so I might record that and see how it turns out. Uh, it's probably going to be a week or two before they get here. I've also ordered a Freedom Shield, and they're saying a two-week backlog. So 
the, I think you get the most bang for the buck using the uh, wind deflectors with a windshield. I think, uh, I think in about three or four different videos I have asked a question and for whatever reason I was never able to share the video and I don't think I've ever published it which was for the, you guys who wear bacalavas do you wear them all year long uh, I've noticed I get some sunburn on my cheeks and I'm a little worried about skin cancer given I'm fair skinned and had a couple of bad sunburns or do you just wear them in the cold months I'm wearing one now but I have it off my cheek so I'm debating whether to move the camera again Let's see.